Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm be showing you how to get a cinematic look for your footage that you're shooting on your own DSLR camera. A lot of people have these tutorials on how to get that Hollywood look, but they're using stock footage, and it's kind of not fair because they're not doing the hard part, which is recording properly and using proper lighting and things like that. They're just like, hey, I made a cinematic look, but they're not really doing work. So those tutorials are just usually bullshit. This tutorial is going to show you how to get the cinematic look on amateur shot footage that I shot on my DSLR camera. I have a Lumix G7 from Panasonic and I shot a lot of different footage on a lot of different lenses but I'm going to be showing you my favorite one which is shot on a 20 millimeter lens with a 1.7 f-stop meaning it's a very blurry background for a very sharp image. So let me go ahead and show you some examples of what I mean. And if you want to make your footage look like that, stick around for this tutorial. If not, I got plenty of other tutorials on my channel you can check out if you want. So let's get started. So in Vegas here, I added the footage that we're going to be using, and I'm going to show you. It's just standard footage of my beautiful wife in a park, and you can tell it doesn't necessarily look like a movie. You just be like, yeah, that's shot on a camera. You can tell. So what we're going to do is a few things, and start it off, we're going to add cinematic bars. Right click, insert a new video track. And if you wanted, I provided a link to download a PNG of the perfect cinematic bar size in the description. So we're gonna drag that in here. That, it already looks much better, much more like a movie because cinematic movies always have those cinematic bars. So once we added that, that's step one. Step two is darkening the corners, which is called vignetting. Now you can vignette with the video effects that Vegas has, but that's only good for videos if you don't add cinematic bars because the vignetting, you have to drag and drop it onto footage. I'll show you right here. We got vignetting and we drag default there. So let's move this out of the way, show this. So you can see it darkens the corners, but now that I increase the timeline, there's no way to actually shrink them so you can match them with the cinematic corners that have been adjusted because of the cinematic bars. It's still vignetting at the corner behind the cinematic bars. We can use the vignetting effect as long as you don't use cinematic bars. But if you do use cinematic bars, it's better to create your own vignetting with a color gradient. So I'm gonna delete this right here. So we have a regular footage again. Let's go to media generators, color gradient, and then we can do elliptical transparent to black. If we drag that onto here, that is a form of vignetting right here. But if we drag this number two all the way to the edge, that distance is 707 from the edge, 45 degree angle. If we click number one and then change the distance to 0 0.45, hit enter, then we got some even better looking cinematic corners. It's kind of stretched out a little bit. But next thing we need to do is click on number two and we need to reduce this alpha to 64. And that's going to create us a really nice, subtle vignetting right here. But it's a vignetting that we can control as its own track on its own timeline. So we can squish this. We can do whatever with this because these corners are now going to match whatever we want. So let's right click, insert another video track and drag the cinematic bars above there. And then what we want to do to make this vignette fit is go to video effects and we're going to go to deform and then we're going to do compress vertically. That's the one you're going to drag on to the vignetting track right here. And once you do, we're going to match these settings that I made, which is 0 0.244. And then make sure all this looks the same, which is basically just one, one and zeroed out. Amount is 0 0.244. And that's going to reduce the corners from up here to down here. So your vignette corners start here, here, here and here. That's already making it look a lot more cinematic. You can tell the next thing is sharpening. Sharpening adds a little bit of detail to your video, but too much of it makes it look really weird. So you got to have a limited amount of sharpening. So we're going to drag sharpen and we're going to do light is the one you're going to drag over here. So let's drag it onto our clip or we could even drag it onto the timeline as a whole. I like doing this sometimes because if I have multiple split clips, anything on that timeline will get this effect. So I drag sharpening there. And then we're going to drag this around to 
0.25 or 0.2 is fine. I like 0.2 because that's subtle enough to make it look a little more detailed without looking kind of just too weird. Like if you, if you drag your sharpening up, let me show you. If you drag your sharpening up way too much, you're gonna see this and it just looks terrible. So we bring that back down to 0.2. That's something I like to add. Next thing we wanna do is color curve. If you go to color curve itself, you can drag the default on here. And what you're gonna wanna do is, let me show you what color curving does. At the bottom left, this is your darks, and at the top right, this is your lights. If you drag this down, you're gonna see it really darkening up big time. If you drag it up, it's gonna really lighten it up. You're gonna see some details in the dark places, basically. You're heightening the shadows. That's kind of what going up here, or you're darkening the shadows. So a really good thing I like to put is right about here, maybe right around this area. And then take this arm and drag it down. So I'm reducing the lights and increasing the shadows because you never want your darks to be the same color of black as your cinematic bars or the edge of your screen. You're gonna want your blacks to be almost like a dark gray, which leads me to my next portion, which is called color correcting. But before we do that, a prelude to that is lookup tables, which is LUTs. A lookup table is basically a user's pre-created color correction, which they have messed with the blacks, whites, highlights, shadows, mid-tones, gamma, saturation, all of those, and they've made one preset. And you can find them all over online for free. People make them all the time and then give them away. And so I have a lookup table that I like to use. The most common cinematic lookup table you'll be using is teal and orange. It basically makes the skin pop out a little bit orange and makes the shadows look a little bit blue. So it's the opposite end of the color spectrum, which makes it work perfectly. So I have a teal and orange right here that I'm gonna drag onto the timeline. And you can see it's big time. It went huge teal and orange. You can clearly see that's the two main colors of this. So I'm gonna do a split screen view and show you the differences. Right here's where all the effects are. And right here is where there's no effects, minus the cinematic bars in the corners. Because they're not effects, they're tracks. This is just a little bit too much. Like, that's just way too much teal and orange. But with the lookup table filter, you can drag the strength from 0 to 1, basically 0 to 100. And you can drag it down. I like putting mine right about 40%. And we can turn it on and off and you can see the difference. It adds a real nice tone to the film. It kind of makes it look like it's getting a little more sunset, but it's a little cold outside. That's kind of like the look you're getting. Basically, lookup tables, yeah, you're trying to get a specific look. There's so many different types of lookup tables to make it look like on an acid trip or make it look like a hot, arid desert, make that green Breaking Bad look. You can do a lot of things with lookup tables. It's just like a shortcut or a first stepping stone on color correction. So this is the mood I'm kind of putting the film in right here. and. That brings us to our next step, which is color correcting. So lookup tables are fine on their own, but you still gotta match the color. So we go to color corrector and drag our default onto the track. You're gonna see this. Lows are your darks and low tones. Mids are your usually skin, and then highs are usually your reflections and your whites. So the standard you wanna do is drag your lows to some sort of darkish teal down here. Maybe not too much. You can see if we do it way low, it's gonna really turn all your darks and blacks and convert them to blue or whatever color you're at. So I like having it right around here. And then if you wanna go the Breaking Bad look, you could even drag it over here to this green, which doesn't look too bad. We'll go with a sort of Breaking Bad-ish look. And that's your lows. Mids is gonna make skin pop. Right now you can see my wife's skin looks kind of the color of the lookup table at this moment. It's kind of taken that color. We wanna bring it out more. We wanna make it a little more yellowish orange, The bring a little life to it. And that's what the mids will do. So we drag that up a little bit. You're gonna start seeing her skin come to life along with the mids in the background too, which is more um, in between shadows and, and brightness. That's the mid. So those are like the leaves and a little bit of reflections on the leaves. They're coming alive a little bit. So I like having it right about here, looks pretty good. And then our highs, usually cinematic movies turn their highs also the same color as their lows, or they make it typically a, the tealish portion right down here. So we drag that over here. That's gonna turn this white gondola, let's drag it all the way to show you. Turns the white gondola and the reflections and the sky all the here, that teal. 
So we want to kind of have it right around here. Be good to me. Maybe a little less. We have a hint of just not, it's not truly white, white. You're, you're coloring the white. It's like coloring a book, you know, like a coloring book when you were a kid. You know, you're, you're adding the colors. You're shadowing it in right here with this tool. We have that, which looks really good. And that's just some basic numbers. Usually you want to stay opposites of each other, which looks good. So we were to drag this back over here. We got a more serious, coldish, gloomy look. But I still like just the look. You can mess with it however you want, truly. It's up to your eye at this point. But I like this greenish Breaking Bad look along with this. And last but not least, this one's optional, but if you want to give it like a simulated film look, you add a film grain layer above it. And what you do is you hard light that into your footage and very subtly you'll have the film grain going all throughout your footage itself to make it look like it was shot on a film. I have a link for that as well in the description if you want to download this film grain. And let's drag that into here. To right click, make a new video track and put your film grain above your footage. And it's going to completely take up the whole entire footage. You're going to see it's just a real fine film grain. But we don't want that. We want that to be mixed in with your footage. Now you can do that one of two ways. The easiest way of doing it is dragging the opacity at the top of the clip down to like 10% or something like that. But the downside about that is you got to readjust your settings over here to darken it up. So instead of doing that, you can put this back at 100. On its track right here, if you go into the three bars, the more option, and then go to compositing mode, you can go to hard light, and that merges this film grain with your footage. Now it's extremely hard to see, but I'm going to show you and I'm going to zoom in really far. If you look really closely, you'll see kind of a filmish look, like a grainy look. Let's mute it. And you'll see it go away. And you'll see it come back. Go away. Back. That's the film look. So you see when you play it, the film grain is constantly moving in the background, making it look like it was shot on film. So let's go ahead and recap what we did. First, we added cinematic bars. Second, we vignetted the corners and then form fitted them to the cinematic bars. Third, we sharpened. Fourth, we did some color curves. Fifth, we used a lookup table for a base look we wanted to go for. Sixth, we color corrected it. Seventh, we added a film grain effect. All of those things together makes for a perfect edit for a cinematic look. Now this is all of course after you've gotten your camera settings correct. So with your camera settings, if you're shooting on a DSLR, you gotta make sure you're shooting in 23.97 frames a second. You have to make sure your shutter speed is double your frame rate, so as close as you possibly can get to 48. Usually, for American cameras, you can do 50 as the closest, which is perfectly fine. That gives you the best balance of quality and motion blur without it going too far either way of making it look unrealistic or too blurry you can't even see what's going on. And then of course you want to invest in some decent lenses if you can. The lens I have is a 20 millimeter lens, so it's a really short range lens, but it creates a really good depth of field. 1.7 stop is what it is, and so I'll put a link to the description below in the lens I got and the camera I used, because if you like that, then it's a very good budget camera for this quality. I shot in 4K, so you could kind of see that it is pretty decent quality. And so once you got all that taken care of, once you got the shooting right and the lighting right and the editing correctly, you can make yourself a movie quality video. That wraps it up for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This helped you out at all. And I make plenty of other tutorials, so visit my channel and check out the other ones I got. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that tutorial. If that helped you out, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because that'll help me out and that'll let me know what you guys want to see next. Also, if you want, you can check out my Patreon. The more patrons I have, the more frequent I can do my giveaways and the better the prizes will be. I also sell shirts and stuff on Amazon and TeePublic, so all the links will be in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.